What's up, ladies and gentlemen? You're now watching Kinetic Outcome, and we are with John Leeper, and also the CEO and founder of the UXM, and also another website called music.theuxm. And lastly, <laughs> also once a music artist. So with 20 years of experience in various areas, including the digital world, I leave the full introduction to you. <laughs> Thanks, Hector. Thanks for having me. The UXM.com is, uh, is a marketplace and music.theuxm.com is a online music community for music artists, music fans, and music industry people to network, engage, and monetize their passion for music. So um, those are our uh, two main platforms at the moment. Uh, as far as my background goes, I started out in life as a musician and drummer when I was uh, seven years old. And <clears throat> I played my first professional paying gig when I was 10 years old. And um, from there I went on and you know we eventually made, a cup, made an album and an EP and some things and uh, did some touring in the US. And the, um, the, when I was about 16, I also um, worked for a startup, a marketing startup company. It was a, a business that started in a guy's spare room. It ended up becoming a multi hundred, multi hundred million dollar company. And so during my time with that company, that's when I got my first exposure to entrepreneurship and uh, marketing, advertising. And because I started when I was 16 and uh, I ended up having virtually every job you could have in a marketing company, starting with driving a truck, you know, inserting letters and envelopes and stuff like that. And um, but then I went on to do I became a copywriter, product development person, and then eventually a, a television producer and writer for TV commercials. And then from there, we did a uh, we also did a um, online television live television show, live TV shopping show. And then that with that same business back then, parallel to my music career, we uh, we did an online shopping service. It was one of the very early. And uh, that's how I got my introduction to uh, e-commerce and online. And also parallel to all that, I, I just was sort of self-taught in technology. So that's how I got into the kind of hardcore programming and stuff like that. And I really liked it. I just did it as for fun, but I ended up actually doing it for work for the marketing company. So, so that was my, uh, that's sort of the quick picture of my background. And then from there, I went out on my own after I left um, that marketing company. And uh, one of my first ventures was um, one of the first, uh, maybe the first, fully electronic music magazine. We had things like, um, you know, we would do interviews and things like, like we're doing here with artists and that. And then we would distribute it on a CD disc so that you could, we, it was kind of marketed like a magazine, you know, um, on newsstands and stuff and had a magazine cover, but it was just an electronic disc. And we were actually one of the first companies, this was back when digital was still, the rights issues and all that, you know, was going on in the music business. So we were one of the first companies, our little tiny startup got the blessing of the music industry to use sound samples because we, we did it properly. You know, we respected the artists and the industry and the rights and all that. We didn't so anyhow, so that, that's my background. And then eventually I went into starting my own e-commerce businesses. And that's where we are now. <laughs> okay. I mean, I can't really ask the common questions here because there's so many areas to cover. Okay. But everything that happened was it you being in a flow state where you're just transitioning from area to area and you have interest here and suddenly you move to the next one. Yeah, that's like a, things just fell into place. That's kind of a good way to put it. Yeah, I read in Steve Jobs' background when he went to college, he kind of dropped out, and he but he kept taking courses because he took the courses he wanted to learn about, right? And that was sort of me. Like, like I did the same thing in college. I just took courses I wanted to have, not for a degree, and and my career was kind of the same way. So I, you put it kind of a good way. It was kind of a flow, you know. I would. It was weird the way it transitioned, actually. I mean, playing with the computer to teach myself, and then all of a sudden, I got an opportunity to start an online shopping service. I mean, that wasn't mm -hmm. planned, you know. And um, music has always been, I think, since because I started so young, I mean, it's always been the background of, it's always going through me, you know. So any opportunity 
to work in music, I always would take, um, you know, I would take that path. Yeah, I think that's a good way to put it. That's, it's been a flow, def, very definitely. So none of that was planned out, except the music. Where, right, correct. You know, I, wanted, yeah. I wanted to pursue music, then everything else just fell into place. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty cool. It, it, it fell into place from a flow standpoint, but it was, it was a lot of work. It wasn't like, you know, it was just, but, but, uh, but yeah. Okay. Well, if we go back to the music days, I'm just mm -hmm. curious. Yeah. How was life like on the road when you're touring? Oh, wow. <laughs> well, what's the best part of it mm -hmm. and the sacrifice part of it? The best part is no question is the performance, you know, making the music. Like I was a, I was a drummer and a songwriter. And uh, my favorite part was always composition, writing, like writing the songs. And I was always the, like the main lyric, lyric writer and stuff. So I, I really like the creative process, you know, more, mostly. And then the performance was the second best, you know, and everything else was just work. <laughs> you know, everything in between like performing and writing was, was work. It was just, uh, you know, the music business. It's very demanding. Demanding. Yeah. yeah. How is it like, for example, let's just say if you were still a music artist now at your mm -hmm. prime, maybe 25 to 30, but you have a family. Mm -hmm maybe children as well, right. and you're on the road, mm -hmm. how often do you have to be on the road to actually earn a great living? Well, that's, you know... Because you're sacrificing time, right? Yeah, that, that, I think that's, especially at the time I was doing it, not, you know, because um, touring was, that's how you promoted. You couldn't, you had to tour, right? You had to be out playing. So I think that was, I mean, probably one of the biggest demands, you know, would be... Let's say in a year, how, what's the percentage... Of, of well, one to one hundred well, of when your I, time. When I when I was performing, it was before I was married. So for me, it was you know I didn't have that issue. But we had married uh, band members, and it was you know it's very difficult. You know, very difficult. We we would play about um, like the way we did it was in spurts. We would be like we'd play five or six nights in a row, then be home, and then for a couple days, and then we'd play again. And what what we did because. Um, we would mostly play around the area where we lived a lot. So if we played, um, say, four or five nights in a certain area, we could easily just drive home for the night, one, for the two or three days off. So um, it wasn't, we weren't too much out like for a year at a time. We didn't do too much of that. But mostly it would be like four, four to five nights a week at a stretch and then back for maybe three or four nights off. In the back now, like that. So, for instance, if you're based in the U.S. but you're touring areas in Europe, mm -hmm. then you might be gone for six months or eight months. Oh yeah, but we didn't do we didn't do overseas our band, so we we never had to do that. But yeah, that's the way the industry works. I, I don't the, I'm not sure now. You know, I mean, with the current state of things, I'm not sure how it works works now. But digital. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, I mean, at that time, that was pretty much the only way to get exposure, really. I mean, TV was a bit, but but to really do it, to really establish yourself, you had to be out in front of people. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, now moving forward back to the UXM and mm -hmm. right. the music site, yeah. what inspired you to start both, actually? Okay, so it started with the uh, the music site actually is new. We just launched that. The marketplace was sort of a natural progression for me because it's I've been doing that for a long time now. You know, starting all the way back with that company I mentioned. Um, I've always been involved in digital e-commerce, uh, digital marketing almost consistently. So it was sort of a natural progression for me to go into that and do um, like the most logical choice probably would have been just to do a straight online store or something but um i'd done that before and it you know i had some success at that and um i wanted to do something bigger you know far, far uh, more long term far reaching so that's what led to the marketplace idea and um uh, we had some other ideas when we first started the marketplace but and then in, in addition to being a natural progression uh into in, with digital marketing e-commerce I also, we had an idea about a monetization system that 
we, when we start, we really thought this was groundbreaking, and it actually is. We still think that. But we wanted to incorporate that, and um, it works really well in the marketplace. So that was sort of added motivation to do this because it wasn't just like in the past, I did some online stores, right? Things like that. And that's pretty straightforward. You know, you, you have the vitamin store or whatever it is and you sell the stuff. But this, this is really broad in scope, you know, and it encompasses, um, you know, any category. And, you know, so anyhow, we, that's was sort of a natural progression career wise or work wise or whatever to do. Then t now to get to the music part, what once we, um, our marketplace is actually pretty sophisticated on the surface, and it was des designed to look simple, right? To be simple to use, but under the hood, it's very complicated. We have a lot of things going on down there that are built for future reasons and for current reasons, and um, so we had to get the marketplace stable, you know, <laughs> like from a business standpoint, from a technology standpoint, and from a conceptual standpoint, just to get it working. So once the marketplace finally got stable, and it took a while, over two years, two, maybe three, almost three. But anyhow, once it finally stabilized, then we thought, okay, you know, where to go next with this? And with um, the knowledge that we, a lot of the things that we built into the marketplace, we thought, well, you know, this would work well in, targeted community type marketing. And then we got onto music because it was a passion, right? So we thought, well, well let's do music. And then we started building on top of what we already did. So I, this is kind of like that flow you were talking about. It was sort of just flowed because we had spent so much time, effort, and thousands and thousands of lines of code and all this stuff. We thought, well, instead of just limiting it to our own marketplace, you know, we can take it into this next product. That was the the, uh, the evolution, and the music part, the music side is really new. We just launched it on August, so a couple months ago, and then um, we 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 launched it quickly at first because we were all excited. You know, we, we put together the first website, and it was okay. You know, we worked. It, it was nice and had a lot of cool features, but it wasn't built like our marketplace, where it's really rock solid and we built the code from the ground up, and it was super fast. So we. We rewrote the whole thing. Once we got it the way we wanted it, we stopped and rewrote the entire thing. And literally today, yesterday, um, we finished version 1.0 of this new version and we just turned it on live today. So, um, so now we're just to the point where we're going to start rolling it out. Okay. Looking forward. Mm -hmm. Well, if you can explain the vision on the music end, mm -hmm. like, how do you think it would be or see it would be come the next five to 10 years? Mm. Yeah. Okay. I think that's, that's a great question because that's, that's how we're, we're building this. It's very, it's built for the long term. It's not like, you know, go in there and sell some music or do whatever. I mean, we, uh, let me start with the basic, right? It's, it's, um, the mark, it's a community for, uh, as I mentioned, for artists and fans and industry people. So the first part of it is a networking aspect, right? And that's fairly natural online. And then within that, like artists are able to um, have their own live show and it can be paid or free. So they have complete control over how it all works. They can uh, manage their fan club or user base, however they want. There's a discussion forums that the users can come in. And then every time um, the artist uh, comments on something, their, their uh, user base is alerted, you know, instantly and things like that. And also to uh in the big picture to, to to speak to your question um the uh the music industry every industry you know is changing so much and what we this is a bit abstract but what we've tried to do is collapse all the elements of the music business or any business into into one platform so in other words we have a, a unique monetization system that goes along with our platform and that involves a commission system for you know when when anybody invites anybody into the community that person becomes linked to them forever when purchases are made within the network commissions flow to the people who invited and also that person so you, they get the same amount you know and and uh, where this all goes is when if we just take it just from the artist perspective that comes online and they bring their their fans in and as it goes forward 
it begins producing an income stream for not just the artists, but for their fans. Because if their fans go out and say, hey, come here and see, you know, I, I really like this, this singer, I like this artist, I like this band, I like this DJ, and they bring those people in, then the fans are actually monetizing themselves too for promoting their, for promoting their favorite artists. So in the long picture, that's one of the things that we, we aim to do is to really make it a sustaining kind of industry within an industry, so to speak, you know. Does that answer the question? I, I tend to ramble. I apologize. It's, it's, it's getting deeper. So okay. if I'm an artist, I invite, let's say, a thousand people. Mm -hmm. And these people are all connected to me. Right. And they invite another 9,000, let's say. Mm -hmm. So I have 10,000 altogether. Right. The ones they invited are also connected to me. Correct. Mm -hmm. So how does the money monetization part work mm. is, is it they have to buy something no for me? no 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 or, nobody ever has to buy or anything. you get monetized by inviting someone what what happens is when you invite right and you the link is created now any transaction that happens with any of those people commissions go out to all the to the um to the people that invited them and the people who invited those people right within the community not just the artists Right, with everybody. Correct, everybody. So what this does is, and the purchases, they don't necessarily, they don't have to be just music purchases or music oriented. It might be, because remember, we have a full marketplace that this interconnects to on the back end. So, I mean, somebody might buy a jar of peanut butter, you know, or whatever. Whatever it is, they buy clothes or the artist merchandise, anything at all. That money, for the most of it stays within the community because all the commissions go back to the community. The, the platform has a very small transaction fee, but all the, the commissions go back to this these networks. So I'm kind of like picturing Amazon, mm -hmm. right? 200 billion, Jeff Bezos. Yeah, right. Part of that 200 billion is just also shared throughout every user in the platform. Correct, exactly. I said ever, every user. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's actually pretty cool. Yeah. And it can grow fast if marketed properly. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the early birds that invite mm -hmm. and invite after invite to invite earns the most. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think it could, yeah, everybody always earns. I mean, it goes on, but that, that's, I didn't even think of that. That's true. I mean, the, the early, sooner, the, the early birds. The sooner, yeah, the better. Yeah. That was pretty cool. Because it's going to change in time as well, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Like continuously grow depending on the situation, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because as the platform grows, remember, there's not. It, if we use the music community as an example, the marketplace itself continues to grow. So as those customers come over again, as I mentioned, you know, now they're buying clothes, luggage, whatever, you know, even services, anything. So now you just have to find a way to make it attractive to an, as another go-to place for shopping besides Amazon. Mm. So that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. That's really cool, <laughs> like genius in the making. So 10 years later, when you watch this, yeah, I was here. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, next question is, I probably will create new questions in this one. Throughout your process, of course, everybody needs to make a living, right? Mm -hmm. And like you mentioned, everything was unexpectedly just falling into place. Mm -hmm. And you didn't really had a clear idea of you didn't have a clear idea of what the future would be or because probably when you were an artist, you were only thinking about being an artist. Right. right, right. Mm -hmm. And then you got here mm -hmm. and there's many people in life that like to plan mm -hmm. a lot. Right. Mm -hmm. But not all the time it comes into place. Right. Right. So mm -hmm. coming from your perspective where you barely saw yourself here, mm -hmm. what advice would you give to these people that like everything planned out yeah yeah right. I, yeah i that's a good question because I, I actually am a planner once i have a new direction you know like okay when i get the direction then i plan it out but my advice is um there's there's three important elements i think the first one is persistence no matter what you do you absolutely have to persist like that's that's why things kept happening for me is because i I kept pushing forward. You know, if you don't push forward, it's not going to happen. You just sit there, right? So, uh, so persistence is first, especially if someone's wants to, be, if they're an entrepreneur, you, you, you don't have the luxury. You have to persist, right? But the other part of that is, um, and this may be sort of 
along what you're talking and the way you've kind of framed it as flow is the corridor principle. So the corridor principle says you don't know what's around the corner until you walk down the hallway, right? So as you persist in any business or career or, you know, whether you're, even if you're a musician, a musician goes this way and comes into new things as they go forward. So I think the other thing is to, as far as advice, is um, to be cognizant of the corridor theory. So as you go forward on your plan, um, whether you have a plan or not, you have to be aware of what's around the corner as you get to these intersections. Just like with us, with the marketplace, and then taking the corridor theory, the corridor to the music business, you know. So that's second. I think persistence, corridor principle, and then last is just you have to be optimistic and believe whatever it is you're doing is going to work. Period. I mean, blindly, you know. Um, so that's the advice I have, whether planned or not planned. I think it all kind of shakes down to the same thing. You, know, you just have to keep going. So deep into the process of something you want to achieve, we always hit those challenges and brick walls, right? Mm -hmm. And our option is to either break through or make any excuse and just move on to something else and hit another brick wall. And a lot of people do that, right? right? right. So in terms of persisting, as we grow older, mm -hmm. we have to take care of ourselves. We got expenses, right. got to pay bills. Right. And when that comes into the picture as a factor mm -hmm. of what you're trying to pursue, but right. money is also... Yeah, yeah. Something you have to look at. <clears throat> yeah. How do you push through that? Do you yeah. go for other sources of income or you just focus on that one thing? That's a great question because that's one of the biggest challenges everybody will face. Mm -hmm. And it's, I, I think, and these are my opinions, you know, I don't know that I have all the answers, but it's just my opinion. But whatever it is you do, it has to be motivated by passion because at some point you will hit that place guaranteed. Nobody escapes it. You're going to hit that place where everything's gone wrong. You got no money, you got nowhere to go, you're literally on the street. We've been close to that. You know, I mean, just, and you have to have the passion to say, look, I, I believe in what I'm doing. I'm going to keep pushing through this, you know. So what am I saying? I, that you have to really love whatever it is you are doing. Like, 100% or alternative incomes? I think so. Like I, I, like, I think you have to be single-minded in your purpose once you have it. If not, so just <clears throat> tunnel. Yeah. Tunnel it. Forget yeah. this, because I'm, I'm also a believer of you can do part time elsewhere, but it eats your time. Yeah, from being productive here. Yeah, because time is uh, the biggest challenge. Um, th that there's no bigger challenge than time. So even if you have whether you have problems or you don't have problems, you're never going to have enough time to do all the things on your to do list, right? To accomplish your your vision, right? Time is absolutely always the issue. So that, that comes down to that decision. And I think, you know, I mean, realistically, you, people have to eat. So you have to support yourself somehow. You know, you've got to find the way to do it. But I, I really believe, and I, I've seen other startups too, like not just my own. You know, I've seen what people go through to get where they get. And it's, you know, there's almost, I don't think anybody escapes the, I'm out of money, I'm out of everything, I'm on the street. It's gonna happen. Somehow you gotta plow through that, you know, whether it means doing something emergency or taking a side gig or, you know, whatever it might be. But time, time is the, the issue. So, you know, where do you put your time? That's probably the biggest challenge everybody faces, I think. It's like Rocky Bobo, yeah. go for broke. You have to. <laughs> yeah, you know. okay. Yeah. And uh, next question is, what kind of mindset does it take to get to the level of where you are and what you do for e-commerce, like building these websites and businesses in general? Mm -hmm. And you did mention your profile, you had experiences with different companies and mm -hmm. built it yeah. from the ground up in terms of building the profits, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can leave it from there. Yeah. Do you mean? Uh, do you mean what, what skill sets or what? What? What does it take? What's to, it take? To, to get that? I think yeah, it's a combination of. Or get to that level. Let's say. Okay. I think I think the first thing again back to persistence is is it and kind of self self learning and self education like because hunger for learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you know the um, that's I, I actually I was going to say I guess key points. Yeah. Like like the, the, do you need to have a little bit of anger like that killer mentality mm -hmm. you know. Um. 
I, I go with passion. Okay. You know, I mean, you, you got to want it so bad. It's like, um, you know, Steve Jobs said, stay hungry. That's it. That's the prescription. I mean, he was right. If, if you stay hungry for what you want, you, you'll get it. You know, um, nobody can predict. Time. I always say the one thing you can't predict is time. I always think things are going to happen a lot faster than they do. Um, that's the only thing you can't predict. It might take a long time. It might not. But, but I, I guess my answer is um, you, you just really have to. It, the reason I say passion and wanting to do it is because it, it's not it's so hard to do that if you don't really love it and believe in it and see it and see the end result you probably won't get there because you're going to hit walls that are just so brutal. And you're saying, man, I can't go on, but you got to do it. It's like you got prime Mike Tyson in front of you and he's just jabbing you nonstop. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You got to say, I'm going to, I'm going to win this fight. And you're getting, you know, beat to death. But you still keep going. But I can do this. I can, I can win. You know? Okay. So the next question, when we were talking about, like you're in a boxing, boxing ring with Mike Tyson, right? right. So when you get to that position where everything is just not working out, mm. I'm sure everyone goes through it. Mm. You've been through it, just sure. confirming. Yeah. What kind of mindset did you need to go through in terms of mm. adjusting in that moment to keep pushing forward? Because there's many mm. people that just quit in these situations yeah, yeah. where it's already hard, it's not working out. Right. And yeah. They just think of every worst possible case scenario and just quit. Right. Yeah. Like how, how do you persist? You, you have to be an optimist. There's no, no other way about it. That's what I believe. I mean, because every single thing that happens to you, if it's, if it's good, then it's good. If it's bad, you at least learn. As long as you learn something from the bad things, I think that, that's sort of the mindset. It, it's optimism, but not just rose-colored glasses optimism, but knowing that what's happening to you, you're going to turn into something positive. Because every time you do something wrong, you know not to do that minimally, right? But generally, you learn more than that. You know, you learn, well, why didn't that work? And you kind of see why and stuff. So I think the mindset is just to just to always take the, um, dig the gold out of whatever it is that's happening. You know, you got to, you have to do that, I think. I think there's no other choice. Again, it's like, as, as you said, otherwise you would just give up, you know. I mean, <laughs> Attitude, right? Yeah, for sure. Like, Absolutely. Even if 80% is chaos mm -hmm. when you're out there with people having conversations or maybe you're on on your next uh if it was a business you're building mm -hmm. on your next potential business deal and meeting you have mm -hmm. to be at your best positive mm -hmm. state yeah. yeah and that's probably the toughest thing to handle so how were you handling that in your earlier days when you had to mm -hmm. transition because you got to get through that growth right there must be a yeah. moment where it was really tough oh yeah many yeah <laughs> there like were many men many, 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 many. where <laughs> yeah. you were just i don't know not yeah. everyone goes through depression it's more on yeah. crazy pressure yeah and people yeah. can see it and it's yeah affecting you yeah. emotionally and just mm -hmm. your mind yeah once in a while i um I, for me i just just keep trying to plow ahead you know kind of you know but um but what, sometimes it's good to just disconnect. I think especially for someone that's really motivated, you know, they're always working, always working, always working. Once in a while, and not not too often, but once in a while, it's good just to say, you know what? I, and I have reached this point a couple of times. It's just like, I'm shutting everything down. I'm going to watch a movie, you know? <laughs> I'm going to escape for like three hours, even though there's all, everything's crumbling around me, you know? But sometimes you just have to clear your head. and. For me, and again, everybody's different, I think, but for me, I know I've hit that point if I suddenly feel non-productive. Because as I go through the day, I feel like I get a lot of stuff done. Every once in a while, if I get to a point where I'm not being productive, you know, no matter what I try, it's not, I'm not producing anything that's, that's of value. I'm just spinning my wheels. That's when I know I have to just stop and disconnect. Even, you know, just... Just be it for a couple hours, but just to erase your mind of what you're thinking about. And um, I remember back, you mentioned in the past, I remember uh, like a long time ago when I was first doing these uh, online e-commerce projects and stuff. And I was actually coding, you know, myself. And, and I'd work like two days straight without sleep, you know, the typical programmer thing. I remember there would be times when I would suddenly have a problem and I couldn't get it. You know, I couldn't, why can't I get this? And I would work on it, work on it for like, 
hours, two hours. And it's just not working. And I thought, okay, I'm going to go home and go to sleep, right? And I would come back after sleeping, you know, the next morning or whenever it was. The answer would happen in like 30 seconds. You know, I would solve it. So again, there's just the point sometimes I think where you do need to just disconnect, clear your mind. Think of, you know, whether it's just sleep in that case, but, um, or, you know, read a book, you know, watch a TV show or a movie or something, you know, that can help sometimes. Have you experienced burnouts? Yes. <laughs> like where long breaks are necessary, like a week or two? I've had a couple of times when I felt burnout, yeah. yeah. How long was your longest break before you started feeling that urge to, okay, yeah. I must, I must start yeah. working again? I think I only had one time where I took a long break. It was a long time ago. I um, I had one in my, um, one position I had was uh, to turn around an e-commerce company. They had spent a year and a half, spent a lot of money, and they had zero sales, you know. And anyhow, we did it. I came in and we turned it around in like three months. It was really, and so we went really hard at this for like uh, about 18 months, I think. And I crashed after that. I really crashed. I remember, I don't know what happened. I just lost it. I was just drained because it was really brutal to get it. But it was successful. You know, it was a weird kind of weird sort of duality to it, you know, because on one hand it was great success, but I really burned myself out. I, I think it took me a while to recover from that because um, what I do then, I, I was more than of, a month. Yeah, about a month, maybe six weeks. And because um, mm -hmm. I took, I actually, left that business. I mean, we just kind of had a parting of the ways, you know, and then uh, they eventually called me back for a new venture. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, that, that, that was, that was probably the only time I think, and maybe, maybe one other time, a really a long time when I first left the music business mm -hmm. as a professional musician to go into like full-time work uh, in marketing, you know, that was a gradual break, but that was a real mindset changer, you know? <laughs> Mm. So that took a while too. So I would say maybe only two times in my life I had where I really needed time. What are the symptoms of burnout, like really bad for your experience? For me, you lose your passion for what you're doing. I, I'm always passionate about whatever I'm doing. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, the simplest thing or something big. But when you, when you don't have the passion anymore, that's burnout for me. That means, okay, I got to stop this and get my head back on. You know, what about like? feeling lost all of a sudden you're like not in sync of the goal and having negative thoughts i think that's kind of the same thing like to me that would be the same thing like it's um you just you just want to rest all day well I, whenever i get that that like those times it was when i lost the passion everything seems to go wrong you know nothing works i mean it doesn't matter what it is even personal life business i mean you know uh for me, I've always pegged it to, you know, if I lose my passion about something, there's something wrong. I got to step back and recollect myself, you know, and usually it's burnout. I mean, mm -hmm. actually it only happened a couple of times and both times it was at the end of a really long stretch of nonstop, like going against the Hustle. wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Okay. Okay. So next question, this connects as well. Mm -hmm. Through that phase, like the burnout or the tough phases mm -hmm. when you're building whatever you have to build how is the support system playing a great part into this process your, your friends let's say or your core oh, friends family that's that's another important part i mean yeah. my, my wife is i'm lucky she's a hundred thousand percent supportive that's very important because if um i don't know how you how one how anybody could do it if they didn't especially your spouse you know and then your immediate family and I've always been fortunate, my family, my friends, I've always had really great support from people around me, like 100%. But I think that's absolutely, I don't, I don't know, I don't have any, a, straight, um, a frame of reference for what it would be like to not have that. Because I've never, never been in that situation. But I can't imagine it. I would be, because it's your whole life, right? You're, you really need everybody to be with you, you know. So you vent out in those really, really tough times. To, to these trusted people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, if, the, if when you're really supported, it's, you know, you know it's there and it's consistent. You know what I mean? It's not like qualified support. You know, it's like they're, they're always there. It means you kind of don't have to worry about it. You know, it's a huge mm. thing off your shoulders. I mean, if you had that, like I said, I've never experienced it. I don't know how, you, how anybody could do it, you know. 
it would be really hard. It would make, make okay. life really hard. Yeah. Cool. And next question is, what impresses you about yourself? <laughs> I think that, uh, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Uh, it's like, you just, wow, I'm so good at this. Like, not, not ego, but I'm just yeah. really good at this. I think uh, creative problem solving, like c- coming up with creative ways to do things. And like, you know, I, I think well, I've worked with a lot of people who are, are experts at what they do. And sometimes I'll have an idea <laughs> that I want to do. And everybody's like, no, that's not going to work. You know, like that really can't be done. And then when we work together, we, we do get it done. You know, it happens. And I think, and then they're happy because they think, wow, that's pretty cool. So maybe that's something that I think that I think maybe uh, add some value, you know, because whereas, whereas most people generally just accept the fact that the experts tell you it can't be done, that it can. I always find there's a way to get to the end point one way or the other, you know. So to put it in another way, you're like someone that finds a yes to the no's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. To say no, <laughs> well like, put, yeah. no, yes, yes. Like, yeah. No matter what you say, yes, I'll get it done. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. And uh, for the upcoming question, you know, all of us can't, cannot fit in with everyone, right? Mm. Can't satisfy everybody, which means we're always going to have really good supporters and we're going to have enemies. Right. Yeah. Especially if you are very polarizing as a person, right? Mm-hmm. So the younger we are, the more aggressive we are as well. So I haven't met you in those days. I mm-hmm. wish I did. <laughs> uh, I want to see the difference. Um, how did you handle the non-supportive ones or hmm. the ones that always yeah. seem to not trust you're going to make it? Yeah, yeah. That's a good question. That's kind of a tough thing. Um, I've only, there's been a handful of people like that, you know, of course, the encountered. I guess it kind of depends on my position at the time. Like, um, you know, if I was working within another project, you know, or it wasn't my my business, you know then you have to deal with them, right? You have to work with them. Like, I, did it affect you or you just, yeah, just move forward? No, it didn't affect me. But, okay. you know, I, I know what you're saying. It can be a little bit challenging. But um, I just keep on my own path, I guess. for the, That's all I really know how to do. <laughs> I just keep going along. And it just it becomes like maybe they're an irritating a little bit. But, um, but you just keep going, you know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There is no choice anyway if you have to work together. Yeah. Just get the job. Yeah, to do it. Yeah. Uh, it's get... all it's always best to work together with people no matter mm. what. Even if you don't like them, you know. Have that. I haven't had that situation too often, but um you have to make the best of things with people, you know, because that's you have to work with people. Have you experienced working with people that you can feel don't like you, but in the end of the project you liked each other? Oh cool. yeah. Yeah, okay. for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Yeah. As I mentioned, I I had a few, um, a couple of technical people I worked with. I remember one case, just a quick example. There was a guy that everybody kind of treated him kind of like a, an outcast in a certain way. And and then he he and I were assigned to kind of work together on a project, right? In the beginning, he was like, oh, who's this guy coming in, right? He's going to tell me what to do, and I know everything. And he did. He was very brilliant, right? But by the end, we were like really good friends, and he really hated it when I laughed. You know, when we split. <laughs> so yeah, it was a complete turnaround. You know. Mm. Okay. And uh, this is the second last question. So, uh, what advice, coming from your experience, would you give to the very young people just freshly graduating? Mm. and still young pursuing right. what they have to pursue like yeah. in, in terms to relate to maybe patients or mm. things that you could have done better at their yeah, age yeah. yeah i know I, I say i keep i've answered a lot of this a lot of questions the same way but uh persistence you know what they want to do but also i think there's two two especially when you're when you're really young like there's two sides one is you have to educate yourself right whether it's going to school to be educated or educating yourself. So one one advice I would give is to absolutely educate yourself in addition to whatever education you're getting from school because they're both good. But again back to that Steve Jobs, you know, approach. There's things that you want to do that maybe aren't going to be in your routine educational system, right? Learn them. Like just buy every book you can, listen to every watch every video on just Teach yourself, you know, if it's something you want to do, 
you, you can learn it. You know, you don't have to wait to for the educational system to you know okay in year three you'll learn how to do this even though you're burning to do it right now right i say educate yourself in addition to the education you're getting that i think that's huge what was the other part of the was that did that answer the question or just that like maybe mistakes you've gone through as well that oh, was, you, you yeah. think they should be aware of because yeah. they're still younger yeah right yeah pursuing just, what they have to pursue yeah Again, kind of like what we said earlier, if you make a mistake, just make sure you learn from it. That gives it value. You know, instead of it just being a mistake and sitting there as a mistake, it sits there and it's, oh, this is a learning. That now this you turned a negative into a positive. So learn from the mistakes. Don't accept, don't feel bad that you made a mistake. It's like, oh, I messed up. It's like, okay, that didn't work. So what do I learn from that? You know, what can I gain from it? And then as always, keep moving forward. Just never stop moving forward because then you're going backwards. You know? Okay. That's about it? Yeah. All right. And the last question is, is there anything you're excited about that you would like to share that you're looking forward to at the end of this year, <laughs> Q4, or next year or the years to come? Yes. A exactly. Actually, today is a good day to ask me that question because, uh, as I mentioned, we just relaunched our music.theuxm.com. I'm really excited about this, like huge excited. We're, we just got the technical part done like literally today, yesterday or today. And over these next month or so, we're going to um, really start to roll it out. And I'm very, very excited about this. And on the, uh, in fact, on October 25th is the official relaunch day. And we, um, we have a, sh a show scheduled. PSTV is doing a special live show. And they've invited some um, some guest performers. Everybody go to that and watch it. It's going to be great. But I'm really excited about uh, music.uxm.com and what we're going to do with that as it goes forward. So, um, yeah, right now that's what I'm really excited about. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, kinetic outcome. And before we are out, I'm just going to mention again, I will drop the websites, the links and also his details, so you can check his profile as well. And uh, thank you so much, Hector Tamil, John Leeper. Pleasure to have you. Thank you, Hector. Our aim is to provide value. So if you like what you watched, make sure you hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. I'm also a financial advisor based in Hong Kong, so feel free to check the description box for my details and email or DM. And if ever you need video and photography services, the phenomenal videos you're watching right now are filmed by Edry Mendoza. Lastly, if you love hip-hop music, rap, R&B, singing, whichever that sounds amazing to your ears because I always do a lot of experiments with it, feel free to drop by my channel at SCF Saint or Saint Crossfade. Appreciate you for being part of this episode and more to come. Till next time.